it's Cosmo. We're talking about video and hunts today and I use GoPro cameras and I'm going to share with you the modifications and the methods in which I employ these to get the footage that I want and not have to have a cameraman with me. The very first thing is the cases are clear so I took an aerosol camo paint, sprayed it in a cup, an artist brush, painted them, did it for free. You don't have to buy the aftermarket stuff or the, the $60 cases that are camo. <clears throat> Another thing is the audio. If you use a waterproof case, it's muffled or non-existent. And so I use the skeleton case, which has cutouts on the side, which makes it susceptible to moisture, which we will address. Another thing is the battery life. Batteries last two hours. It's not long enough for a waterfowl hunt the way I do it. Uh, I get my camera set up at 6.30. Uh, we hunt till 10, 11, 12, waiting for the late flights of geese maybe. Uh, so this is from GoPuck. It's a 6,600 milliamp battery and it lasts from 6.30 to noon. And it has a switch on it and you see that light come on and what I found with a lot of these big batteries is then when the camera charges up the battery shuts off the camera discharges and then you're out of battery this one does not seem to shut off I've used it for a year and it's never failed me yet it's white but I made these little cases uh, and they clip onto the tripod and this is exactly how I would use it this is an example of, of how the camera is on the tripod and that will last from 6.30 to noon on the waterproof issue, or splash proof as I call it, I took Gorilla Tape where the screen back is, and the screen back you need so you can orient your camera to get the footage you desire. I ran that tape around that seam. That button still works. I cut it out for this little deal here for all the ports, and the, the camera comes with this little plastic rectangular uh, plate. I took a scissors and cut that angle out of there, and I plug it in like that and then when you plug the camera cord in you're pretty well splash proofed so that's what it would look like in your skeleton case and the tape covers all that and so you can get splashed on and I'll show you some footage at the end of just how much splashing you can get and it will still survive the remote does not last long enough either so I took a pencil battery or lipstick battery and uh, the, the remote comes with a velcro strip and so I strapped that on there plugged it in it doesn't draw as much juice as a camera so this little bitty battery will run your remote the entire time and you'll be in good shape I set three of my cameras in the water right left and on the blind and I set them on narrow view because if you're on medium or wide your subject is so far away that you just won't get good quality footage up close like you would like so setting them in the water sounds dangerous but it's really not I got these uh, these are Targus tripods I got them from Walmart they don't have a center in here so the legs flare out and you see that one behind me on the floor the legs are flared quite wide and I make a a window weight you can use any kind of weight that you want but I tied knots in it so I can adjust the depth and it hangs on this on this hook so it actually gives down pressure in the water I've had the dog bash into it never even tip the tripod over it works just fine on the gun cam that battery obviously will run out as well so I plug it in and I came up I found a long cord this one was white and I just painted it I need to do it again but it's plugged into the battery in my blind in a little bag that I have there so when the action is getting ready to start I just unplug it and I can go ahead and shoot and not be tethered to a battery I shoot three and a half inch magnums and it makes that mount slide around on the gun barrel so I take this it's just uh, friction tape put the friction tape on there crank it down camera stays exactly where I want it to stay I've broken three of these cases and I'm not sure what the problem was I don't know if it was the three and a half or what <coughs> but I've taken uh, a stainless steel zip tie and zip it around there and then just take it sh you know shiny so I take a sharpie and, and darken it down and if you don't put that plastic plate in there and this camera doesn't get near the water like the others do if you don't put the plastic plate in with a pair of tweezers you can get your card out so you never need to open this case up and take that zip tie off you can charge it and use the card at you know without taking the case open Here's a mount that I use for deer hunting. This is actually sold by GoPro, and that gives you a good blind cam. 
Here's another socket mount that I dismantled a tripod and made it. I've got three locations where I have permanent stakes. You just drop those over, crank it down. They're where you want them and it's good and safe. They can't tip over. Just think out of the box and mix and match and utilize all this stuff to customize it for your hunt. I'm not representing GoPro or GoPuck. <clears throat> I've contacted them. They didn't want any part in, in any uh, technical expertise. So this is just stuff that I've learned over the last three or four years on videoing. And it's too much fun to video your family and friends and kids and grandkids. So just go out there and create those great hunting memories. And if you like these DIY videos, I've got a lot of habitat videos coming up and, and, and a lot of other things, a lot of hunts. Go ahead and subscribe to my page. And and when you get on there, look around and you can see the deer hunts and you can see how I use the cameras in the deer hunting with no cameraman and it makes much better hunting for you. So get out there and get those video memories. This is why I splash proof my cameras and why I put them out in the water. You get some really cool footage, but you do run the risk of getting splashed on. And you see here, it goes right on the front of the lens. And by the way, I put rain -X on there so that just slides right off. Footage is just too good and and you couldn't get that with a cameraman he's not going to be able to position himself out in the water and you just see by this i've got the sound turned down on the camera track right now but you can get the audio of the birds honking of shooting and the camera is right out there in the middle in the middle of the action and this action happens so quickly that's why i use an external battery uh, and have the camera on and ready and I just hit one button on the remote all four cameras come on at the same time the audio is all synced up in the jackrabbit mode it just didn't seem to be fast enough and many times when you're sitting there you get surprised by some birds and they just come rolling in and you just can't get the footage and you just wish that it were different and so I have the camera turned on one button all four cameras come on everything's synced up and then it comes down to which view you want Here's an example of a, there I'm picking up the blind camera and that's in a little shorter depth of water and this is the left camera and here's the right camera and I, you can see I've got the weights on there and uh, and that one was in pretty pretty deep water and there's three different water depths right there. The, this is an articulating mount I made for a permanent blind and here are the post mounts I made for some other permanent blinds we have. It's just very handy to be able to slide that socket on there and they're completely secure. I just used a T-post and you bolted the pipe to it. Here's a gun cam. I love this gun cam. It goes with you when you get out of the blind. You can actually see shooting the birds. This bird came right at me here. Never would have had this footage if I didn't have the gun cam on it. It's a great way to actually improve your shooting and you actually see if you've got the proper lead on the bird. And here we killed all five. I shot a triple. The gun cam's really cool. If you're shooting well, if you're not, it can be kind of embarrassing at the same time. This next clip is exactly why I put the stainless steel zip tie on the gun cam because as you can see here the camera case busted open the, the camera is laying down under the dog I don't even realize it yet then we just shot these birds I cut the dog loose and you can tell by my reaction I'm about to actually have a stroke so I was very very blessed that the camera did not roll into the water and thus I used the stainless steel zip ties here's a deer hunt this is the same segment blind gun and ground cam try to get this footage with a cameraman this is my wife's hunt and she didn't feel like she put a very good hit on the deer and so after she got done hunting I said well let's go back and check tape so we looked at it I could tell that she did put a good hit on the deer and we retrieved him just within about a hundred yards of where she shot him but this ground cam is so cool you just couldn't have a cameraman down there to get this footage he's not laying down scent and not wrecking your hunt and you're out there by yourself I hope you enjoyed those video clips and got some ideas on how to capture your own hunting memories. Your only limitation will be budget, imagination, and editing. Your imagination is what you make it, and on the editing, there are several free programs out there that work quite well that you can get off of the internet. And for the budget, this is quite an investment with these cameras, and I use a case like this. It's shockproof, waterproof, and it has a place for all four of my cameras batteries, remote, and various accessories. 
I hope this information was helpful and I hope that it can go out and help you capture your own hunting memories. Cosmos, Cosmos, Black Dog Outdoors. Have fun.